Yep. Uh, this is all happening as the House just passing a bill moments ago to lower prescription drug prices. Earlier today, the White House hosting a child care and family leave summit in a push for legislation to improve daycare funding for working parents. And Congress is closing in on a bipartisan deal to end surprise medical bills. Washington finally doing something on these kitchen table issues that have so much to do with the daily lives of American people. Here to discuss it more, Wall Street Journal opinion writer Jillian Melcher, liberal radio host Ethan Behrman, and America First Action PAC communications director Kelly Sadler. Great to see you all. Uh, Jillian, I'm going to go ahead and start with you. Uh, some big accomplishments made so far this year, but these kitchen sink items, they're really important to people. Do you think progress can be made in 2020, or is everyone going to be so focused on impeachment and the election that these things fall through the cracks? Well, you know, on the, the prescription drug pricing, I'm actually pretty concerned about the long-term consequences of it. It's something that plays well with voters, but I think uh, if you look at some of the ways that they're trying to do it, what it's actually going to end up doing is cutting back on medical innovation. And that's, this is not the time to be doing that. We're seeing all these incredible breakthroughs happening. CBO's own analysis coming out and saying this could um, end up with 30 few or breakthrough drugs within the next decade. Yeah. So I think that's concerning. You know, the devil with these things is always in the details. Mm. And part of what I'm concerned about is bipartisan consensus around bad policies. Right. And Ethan, I want to bring you in on this because uh, the proposal passing through the House is one where the government would intervene in negotiating some of these drug prices. Um, and the Republicans, you know, certainly they don't want that. They want to do something about it. How can we bring both sides together, find a compromise to truly start helping Americans? Well, it's the biggest pool of people who are recipients of prescription drugs is that Medicare pool. Of course, the government should be negotiating with uh, the drug companies like we do with our veterans and VA TRICARE uh, for military, uh, uh, actual active military members. It's ridiculous that we're not doing it currently. And why should the American taxpayer and, and uh, healthcare consumer solely fund the profitability and the innovation of these drugs? This is something that actually President Trump should have done in all of his uh, unilateral trade negotiations and tariff impl implementations against our allies is do something about the fact that U.S. Uh, healthcare consumers pay for the drugs for the entire world world, I agree that our government should be negotiating to lower our costs. It's out of control. Kelly, though, once the uh, government starts to get involved, the concern mm -hmm. that Jillian brought up is, is pretty valid, that there's less innovation. Companies don't have the incentive to come up with the blockbuster drugs, and there's a, a lot of R&D that goes into uh, procuring those drugs and the, and the prescriptions that is really what brought these uh, drug prices up in the first place. Yeah, so I think the House version, Nancy Pelosi's version of this bill, is dead on the on arrival in the Senate. And what we have in the Senate is Grassley Wyden um, bill that the White House supports. And what this does is it helps out seniors in that it, you know, it basically caps their out-of-pocket costs on a monthly basis for these prescription drugs. It also ties, you know, if, if a drug company wants to raise the cost on a, a certain drug higher than the price of inflation, um, then they owe the consumer a rebate. And this is more of a bipartisan uh, approach. Again, it's supported by the White House, and it could be passed. Um, but again, Nancy Pelosi's bill out of the House, which basically says the government is going to negotiate directly with these prescription drug drug companies is dead on arrival. All right, Ethan, you're shaking your head. I do want to stay within healthcare, but move on to the issue of hospital billing. Um, this notion of being able to put a stop to those surprise bills that are coming out for Americans. Your thoughts? Oh, yeah. I mean, this is another example of the free market figuring out ways to profit off the American consumer. Health care costs are up 20 percent year over year. Uh, that is under the Trump administration. The Republicans doing nothing to address this. So surprise billing is an easy place where there should be bipartisanship to focus on and say, look, you know, the hospital is in network for me. I go in for a procedure. You're going to surprise me with all these physician bills because the physician was out of network. This is something that is absolutely able to be controlled. It's unacceptable that Americans continue to go bankrupt and have their lives destroyed because they had a health issue and the companies have figured out how to profit on that Ethan, on our backs. I'm going to stop you right there. I want to give the yeah. last question to, to Jillian. You mm -hmm. know, you're watching all these points are so contentious, especially when it comes to health care. It's going to be mm -hmm. a huge issue going into 2020. Do you think these kitchen sink, uh, kitchen sink items just get pushed off into, into the next round? Well, I definitely think that we're going to see impeachment 
crowding out a lot of this. Um, yeah, go I'm ahead. so sorry. I have mm -hmm. to interrupt you. We do have some breaking news on China. I want to get straight to that right now. The United States has reportedly reached a deal in principle with China. Bloomberg reports that the only thing in its way is President Trump to sign off on this deal. The president and trade officials are meeting in the White House right now, as reported by Blake Berman earlier. Jillian, your reaction to this? I mean, I think progress is incredibly important on trade. And I'd also like to point out, you know, when Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act passed, one of the concerns was this, this would affect trade. I think we're seeing that Susan Ping and the Chinese government, even though they don't like the U.S. standing for human rights, um, they won't let that influence something that's that economically important for China. So Absolutely. I'd say move forward with other economies well, they need to their behavior. keep that economy chugging mm -hmm. along. And we were talking with a guest earlier about how growth is decelerating there. Inflation is on the rise. China's in a very tough predicament. Um, you know, the president says they need us more than we need them. And you certainly could make that argument. Yeah, I mean, the Chinese government, you have to remember that their legitimacy derives from economics. Uh, they don't have a social contract with their people that's based on consent of the government. So I think that puts a lot of political pressure on Xi Jinping, on the Chinese Communist Party, to reach a deal, especially as the pain is starting to set in. Jillian, great to see you. Ethan you. and Kelly, thank you as well. We'll talk to you guys again soon. Meantime